Hey everyone, my name is Gabby Stevenson. I am a set designer, scenic artist, and actor in the Atlanta area. And amidst this quarantine, I'm gonna be trying to teach you a couple of paint techniques that are uh, very widely and often used when scenic painting. Now, I made some of this instructional video while uh, one of the theaters that I work at, it was still open. Um, and then some of it is kind of put together in my kitchen to help you guys understand the techniques a little bit better. In some of the videos at Legacy Theater, you will also hear some music in the background. That is because I paint directly on the stage versus in a shop, like the Lyric or Center for Puppetry Arts, for example. Um, so when I'm painting on the stage, there's also other things going on on the stage. And when I was recording some of these videos, someone was rehearsing for a children's musical. Okay, I thought I'd show you guys what a typical paint room looks like. This one isn't quite that typical because it's kind of stuck in a storage closet, um, but it's right off the shop out here. Um, and this is kind of just where I keep all of my paint and where I mix my paint and then I take it out onto the theater um, because I actually paint in the space here at this one. Now it's gonna be different with every single type of theater. Um, we got all of our paint on a paint cart. Um, Spray paint here, usually we do do um, spray paint with certain techniques. Like if I want something to look rusty, I'd probably grab uh, this color and um, lightly dust an item with that. Uh, sometimes if we have small items that need to go metallic, spray paint is the easiest way to go uh, since metallic paint is quite expensive. Um, I have like any of my polycrylic and any of my quart sized colors here. Um, and everything is usually labeled up top with what's actually in the can because sometimes I like to mix in old cans. Um, we have all our other paint colors down here. And usually there's some kind of table. Right now I have things laid out and drying. Um, and there's like a lot more paint in here than there usually is. Uh, but usually I like to mix on a table. I have all of my stir sticks in this bucket. Um, I have some paintbrushes laying out. These ones are really good for edges of things and getting corners if you don't want to use tape. Usually if you're using sponges, you're going to use a large sea sponge like this. Um, and I will show some sponge techniques later, but usually I'll just you know, grasp it in my hand, kind of like I'm holding a baseball. And you are gonna want to twist your hand as you sponge so you're not just creating the same pattern all the way across uh, a surface. Let's see what else is in here. Um, got multiple uh, heights of sticks that I can connect a um, roller cage too if I need to reach high spaces and I don't necessarily want to go on a ladder. Um, I got some paint roller trays in here. Um, and then anything specialty is right here. These are the palette knives I was talking about earlier um, for if you are going to, or excuse me, putty knives, if you are going to add actual texture to a flat. Um, I have small roller cages, large roller cages. I have plenty of painter's tape of different widths. Um, I keep my nicer brushes in here. This is a purdy brush uh, and those are quite expensive, but these are really good um, for nice, smooth textures. Usually for anything else, I'm gonna be using a chip brush. This one has been um, cut so that I can do dry brushing with this one pretty nicely. Uh, I keep rags in here too, because sometimes as you've seen, I water things down and then rags are useful for wiping it up. Um, and then I have things such as garden sprayers in here. These, this is the item that you're going to use if you want to basically create a spatter texture over a really, really large surface. You can create really, really fine dots such as mists with water and down spray, or you can do really large dots if the uh, paint ratio is a little bit greater with the water. Also got your paint key. And I do also have safety goggles in here for if I am spattering, you do not want to get paint in your eyes. And of course, there's a rubber mallet around in here somewhere. Now working on High School Musical 2. Um, this up here is remnants from Mamma Mia that will go this scumble to match and then that will go wood 
to match this. Um, and I actually didn't get any kind of drawings or plans. I just talked to the artistic director and he said, hey, this is what I'm thinking. And I gave him my opinion and we went from there. And I kind of just looked up pictures of research, sent him the ones that I found that I liked the most. And then we settled on something together. Okay, so what I did to go ahead and start us off was paint it all this base color. I used a roller of the light yellow that I mixed, um, and then I went back and forth between this watered down light brown and this watered down dark brown, and I went ahead and dry brushed here. That's when you take a brush, usually a chip brush, and you just drag it along very lightly. Now this is gonna be turning out a little bit differently than uh, if I were just painting on Luan, which was this, as you can see right there, there's the dark, um, dark color that was dry brushed right there. Um, but this one is textured, so it's gonna turn out a little bit differently. So those are the first two layers on here. Now what I'm doing is taking a third layer and wiping it down just with a chip brush with paint that's been diluted with water and then taking a towel and wiping that to bring some of the paint up so it brings out that grain. Now this is a wood graining tool. Um, sometimes they look like this. Sometimes they just have semicircles across. This one is gonna give you more differentiation, like it's weathered wood. The semicircles I would use for if I were painting the interior of a library in the 1800s, for example. Um, so for this guy, I'm not gonna be able to show you how it's used. You can probably look up a couple of videos online, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna paint with your chip brush first, and then you're gonna go back in and drag this while kind of rocking it back and forth and that'll give you some variation. So basically with this tool, you are removing the paint versus putting the paint on. So what I'm about to do here is a scumble, which is a simultaneous blend of usually three or more colors. You technically can scumble two colors, um, but you're not gonna get very much variation. Um, so what you're gonna see is uh, me doing an X motion with my paintbrush, uh, kind of making it a little bit random and making sure to turn my wrist enough so that you don't get any kind of repeat pattern. So for this texture right here, this is actually 3D texture that I added. Um, with glue, water, and joint compound. It's mostly joint compound with a little bit of water and probably like a cup or two of all-purpose Elmer's glue. You mix that together until it gets like a little bit smoother but chunky. Um, and then you slap it on with a, um, a palette knife. 
kind of just in different sections around in the same kind of motion that you would use for uh, scumbling. And then I actually did scumble on top of here with three different shades of pinky salmon, which I will show you here. So here's my lightest shade. Here's my darkest shade. And here's my shade that's in the middle. Again, these are all kind of a little bit different. This one has more red in it. This one's more of a true salmon pink. And this one has a little bit more yellow in that. So that, that way, when they're all mixed together, they're still differentiated. They aren't just different shades of all of the same color. There are other colors within it. Be advised, the few videos that I have to take in my kitchen will not be using paint. They'll be instead using water, but you're pretty much going to get the same results in most cases. So this is an example of spattering. So that produced very large dots. If you kind of flick it and run your fingers across, it's gonna produce really small spatters. And then you can also hit your brush, tap your brush, and that's gonna give you a wider variation of small and large spatters. So usually with sponging, I will dip the sponge directly in the paint can, then kind of sponge it off a little bit on the paint tray so that there isn't quite as much paint on the sponge. And again, for sponging, you are gonna wanna twist your wrist as you move so you don't get a repeated texture such as if I just did this. Then that way you're gonna get lines versus this where it's differentiated. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That's about what I can do from at home during this odd, odd time for people who work in theater. But before I go, I did wanna show you really fast the kind of thing that I get from a designer um, when I have specific paint elevations or specific research that I need to match as the scenic charge artist. So this is the packet that I got for Camelot, which I just finished painting at the Lyric about a month or two ago. It's pretty messy because I am constantly turning through these pages as I am painting. Um, so this was, I usually try and match my paint colors to the actual printout that I get. So this is me after mixing my paint, uh, testing my colors out. So that is to match that, that is to match that. I usually take notes on it. And then once I'm good to go, I start painting and create a plan as to what I'll be doing in terms of steps I need to take to create this texture or look. Here's the kind of thing that I will get for a specific set piece. So in this case, I was painting a fireplace. So I mainly used this and matched these colors as you can see right here, but I also got other inspiration images so I could understand what kind of texture I'm going for. Here's an example of when I get a drafting so I understand how pieces are going to be uh, put together and then the look and again with the color matching in that bottom corner right there. So usually with those I will create a step-by-step -step plan for how to uh, create that exact look of the research photo that I have been given. I will then mix the paint and then I will fill in my other painters on the step-by-step -step plan and sometimes I'll do an example really, really quickly. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to answer them.